everybody. Welcome along. Thanks for joining me on this Monday afternoon market recap. Again, today we have seen the markets themselves. They have stabilized. You can see this is the chart of the NASDAQ on my screen. We closed up, I believe, about 0.8 of a percent up, 57 points in the top right hand corner of my screen. Again, in my opinion, the handbrake on this market is essentially being pulled down and around at least on the NASDAQ, these current areas or these current levels. You can see we closed at 7,997 points. We're very close to that psychological 8,000 handle. Once again, all right, the S&P 500 essentially doing the same thing, a little bit of an inside day candlestick. Yes, definitively speaking, we are still yet to close this gap. We got very close to it on Friday. You can see this lower wick that presented itself on Friday session or during Friday session. However, today, we closed up more or less half of a percent up, just shy of 15 points on the S&P 500. This is interesting. It looks like a little bit of a pseudo uh, shooting star type of candlestick. However, again, textbook speaking, it's not 100% correct. It is that of an inside day, just bullish candlestick. And again, this is happening when you look at it um, across the board on these markets off from either the rising 50-day exponential moving average. You can see this on the S&P 500. You can see on my screen just here that on Wednesday session, right, or at least on Tuesday, we got very close to it, Wednesday, Thursday, and even Friday, we're sort of tagging around this 50-day exponential moving average. And also, if I can bring this up, right, on the longer-term simple moving averages, we is, this is a happening just above that of the rising 100-day simple moving average, which is essentially giving us the confluence of support, mixed, of course, with the open window and the traditional resistance turned, all right, new support when it comes to these horizontal lines on my screen. So again, there is a lot of support underpinning these markets. My one concern at the moment is that of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The reason why it is a little bit of a concern is because, again, we are still yet to come anywhere close to closing this open window. This is essentially happening just above 26,250 points. We're all the way up here, just shy of 27,000 points at the moment. Again, a little bit of a shooting star, a sort of pseudo candlestick. It is that of an inside day candlestick. But again, if you apply the metrics of the 100 day, you can see it is below. Again, it is sort of marking the confluence of support as to where we believe roughly 26,400 points, where that critical support is going to be on the gap but also the rising exponential moving averages. And whether or not this is going to be a key moving forward, if I can just draw a question mark right now, is going to tell us a lot. And what I mean by that is essentially what we've been doing for the entirety of 2019 is printing a series of high highs and also high lows, all right? So again, although the markets themselves, they have been relatively speaking flat, all right? If you if you sort of consider that of the peak back in its September or August, September and October of 2018, more or less we are unchanged. But what is interesting to note is that, well, potentially at some you know future point or even during the current juncture, these exponential moving averages will act as support if we are going to see a trampoline effect or at least a rising support effect. And if we are, of course, going to take out the swing highs that we established during the period of July. All right, so pay attention to that. It hasn't happened yet. Yes, we are seeing a little bit of support continue to build. My biggest problem, however, once again, is that of the Dow Jones, because generally speaking, in order for this market to advance to new all-time highs and to continue trending further into 2019, or at least here we are, uh, moving into the final quarter or the fourth quarter of 2019, we need to see, again, these exponential moving averages hold. Now, again, very sort of all well, the polar opposite as to what was happening in Q4 of last year, we had the absolute meltdown. So again, we moved into a relatively speaking uh, bearish intermediate pullback back into the primary bullish macro trend. And really since then, all right, year to date, the markets are up anywhere or around pretty much 20% at the moment. So again, we've just come back to at least retest, reestablish and move back to that neutral point going back all the way to 2018. If I show you this on the oscillators, this is where it gets a little bit interesting because again, when you're talking about a continuation within that of a larger bullish trend, when you see the oscillators flip bearish, which they have been for the past two and a half weeks, you want to sort of decode the actual price movements that are occurring as the oscillators are moving out of that overbought sort of setting. And as it stands um, in a percentage terms, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, it hasn't really moved all that far. So again, as these oscillators continue to push on down, we're actually moving below the neutral point on the stochastics. We're seeing a little bit of a secondary bounce off from the RSI, but the MACD is still firmly bearish at the moment, uh, which is warning us that technically, yes, we are in a correction to retest this open window. What you want to see, all right, first of all, is you want to see a reversal above the swing low that we've printed in the month of August, and you want to see this substantiated and also validated by these oscillators, right, collectively across all three of the closely followed US markets turning up as well. So pay attention to this. It hasn't happened yet, all right, but it looks to me as though we're moving towards the end of this correctional wave, which again, hasn't really marked um, all that much of sort of a, a deep correction, so to speak. It has been sort of on the surface. The market's very close to lingering around there. 
their July year-to-date highs, which is fantastic. So again, once this dynamic flips, I'll quickly show it to you on the S&P 500. Again, you can see they were trying to turn up on the RSI around the midpoint. The MACD is still a little bit firmly bearish. Uh, the stochastics is pretty much at the neutral point as well. That may mark again, right, that next intermediate high low, which will then set the trampoline based off from the exponentials, the smooth moving averages, the back test of the gap support, the traditional resistance to a new support, which will mark again the continuation of this macro theme further into 2019. So I assume we're relatively close to it. It has taken a little bit longer than what I originally first sort of um, expected or at least forecasted. But again, the markets themselves are holding in there relatively well. The NASDAQ itself, it has gone through the deepest, right, in terms of a material correction. However, you could say that this is relatively controlled, right? We have, I mean, we have seen two, relatively speaking, uh, considerable bearish days. But really, when you think about the pullback, even from this very slight sort of blended uh, double top just here, we haven't really penetrated all that far and we're still quite a way away from even the August lows back down here at 7,720. So again, we're close to 8,000. All it's going to take is going to be a break above that of Wednesday swing high across the board on the market indices. So again, you can see how my triggers are set on the Dow Jones at 27,105 and the S&P 500, 2,992 to get above pretty much the majority of the price action last week. If we definitively see this a close and a continuation above, then you should see these oscillators turn up and, and that would essentially mark that of that next higher low in terms of Dow theory and trend confirmation and also continuation as well. So be mindful of that. <clears throat> a few pieces to sort of pull together at this particular point, but really the markets themselves, they are acting a little bit slow. All right. They are moving or at least going through or jumping through the, the sort of the hoops that need to be filled in, in terms of the gaps uh, a little bit slower than what we would have liked or originally liked to have seen. But that's okay. Uh, the market sometimes has, or at least it operates on its own time, and it has a little bit of a mind of its own. But really, nothing is, has essentially changed from what we've been speaking about over the past number of weeks. The dollar continues to build. You can see here we're printing at 99.41. We're marching on up to pretty much that psycholo psychological round number of 100. I think when we get here, we are going to see a pullback. But it looks to me like we're really starting to gather a little bit of momentum. And we spoke about it after this particular candlestick here. In the past, when we have seen these types of movements, we've seen very sharp uh, pullbacks as well. So essentially right now, you need to be thinking that as long as the dollar holds above roughly 98, uh, again, we're still continuing in the macro theme that we have been in for a number of years now. And again, just to recap, we're looking at the dollar coming up to about 112, which may mark again or coincidentally sort of work in conjunction with the equity markets at some point in the future. I think the timing of this looks quite remarkable as well. Potentially late 2020 or even early 2021, whereby the equity markets will have to assess at that particular time. But it wouldn't surprise me, one, if they are considerably higher, that of the equity markets as to where they currently are once they break above their resistance areas. But also if you look back uh, historically as well, some of the parallels that we saw leading up to the dot-com bubble as well as the US dollar uh, ran on up into this declining resistance area going back to 1984 of chartable data that I have on my screen when it comes to the US dollar index. We've gone through multiple cycles. And again, this just looks like a larger macro theme cycle off from the lows dating back to 2007, 2008, whereby since then, on a large macro theme, the dollar has continued to build over time. And again, we're seeing the continuation of that uh, when it trickles into uh, that of uh, the dollar and also the commodities markets. Last week, we were speaking about potential triggers. Again, this is not in my trading account. I was just going to say, based on the analysis on the dollar and potentially that of a leaning double top or even a descending triangle, mixed with the radioactive area going back to 2011, 2012, it makes a lot of sense that the, that the GLD uh, index itself may come on back down to close 127.92. I said a lot of people may be shocked by this. Keep an eye on this. Obviously, it hasn't happened yet, but again, the sort of the bearish clouds, so to speak, are actually continuing to develop. And when I flick on over into SLV at the moment, you can see again, we've got a little bit of a gap down. Doji Candlestick was sitting right on the next support. It wouldn't surprise me to see a bounce in commodities, a pullback in the US dollar short term, but to see that larger trend actually play out over time. Uh, pay attention to GLD. Again, I think it's going to shock a lot of people. Much like the markets, when they definitively turn, I think there is going to be tremendous upside. Now, a lot of individual stocks today um, are continuing to base, or they have had a pretty decent daily print. Apple breaking out above 223.12. All right, again, it hasn't come down to 209. I'm still mindful that this may happen, but as it stands, again, much like the markets and what I've been speaking about, when you bring up that of the exponential moving averages, if I can push the right um, uh, template on my screen right here, you can see that we're certainly bouncing off from the rising 10 and also 20 exponential moving average. Amazon today, maybe that is a hammer at support. We'll have to assess or reassess this on Tuesday and also Wednesday. But if you see a quick rally out of this area, this is going to determine that of a false break to the downside. It's also going to mark that next subsequent higher low 
albeit as marginal as what it is. Okay, so we do have a hammer candlestick at support. We'll have to pay attention and see whether or not we see any follow through to the upside. Boeing Airlines is still lingering around 388.05. No major news there. Baidu again treading water moving sideways. We're still looking at this breaking to the upside. Caterpillar more or less beginning to at least base at the moment right on that 50 day exponential moving average. So I can hope, I hope, pardon me, that you see the theme. COP saw so a little bit of a, a bullish counter attack today. All right, right at this green rectangular box of gap support and also at the 50 exponential moving average as well. So it's gone through the pullback after the gap up and we've been speaking about our target up here at the magnetic color line, just shy of uh, $63 per share on COP. So again, it looks like a lot of these individual companies are actually in basing patterns or at least continuing in those basing patterns whereby we're, we're assuming that in, a, in due course anyway, or, or in a short, shorter term sort of time frame, we are looking at a bit underpinning a bunch of these individual trades. Disney falls into the category of Amazon at the moment, whereby it has just overshot the support. Yes, we have an open window, but we're still looking at this turning and rallying aggressively above 133.54. I think that's going to surprise a lot of people. Google, again, unchanged largely. IBM, unchanged, really down 31 cents, but really not doing anything at the moment. Still have these open windows. So again, you can see how I'm sort of hedging at the moment a little bit in terms of um, aggressively jumping into any of these companies. Microsoft looking at the breakout above 142.50. Inside day candlestick up $1.30, but largely just moving sideways. And again, if these markets continue to move sideways, based on a bunch of these uh, individual stocks as well basing you're going to see a series of bollinger band squeeze again we've we've been following along with bollinger band squeeze lately however the majority of those squeezes they haven't really played out they've broken a little bit um, early we haven't allowed the bollinger bands to really sort of 100 uh, set up we're sort of getting to maybe that 70 80 percent figure like that loading page so to speak and then we see a jump in price action one direction or another but i assume that we are going to see a definitive series of Bollinger Band squeezes if the markets do continue to move sideways. And Netflix, I don't know, maybe this is that of a bear flag at the moment. We don't have any vested interest. But again, if it moves above 284, this is going to mark a very sort of similar sort of setup to Amazon and also Disney at the moment, whereby we have overshot support. I understand the bearish outlook and the theme for Netflix at the moment. I 100% do. But at the same time, through the eyes and the guise of a, of, of a technician up here, 360 still seems like a very logical target to actually close this window. And then again, if it chooses to move bearish into a macro sort of backdrop, so be it. We could see this substantially lower, uh, substantially lower to where we have been recently. But before we can really sort of validate that, so to speak, we need to close this window up here at 361. So when these markets get moving, I think Netflix is going to be one of those stronger stocks, which is going to sort of fly in the face of, of what it has been over the past maybe three months or so, where it has been relatively bearish so that's going to leave you or that will do us anyway for this monday afternoon market recap if you have any questions email me otherwise jump into that pro analysis class we go through this each and every weekend each and every saturday uh through a recorded uh class up on the website it'd be great to have you in there learning along with us all right so all the best everyone that'll do us for monday afternoon i'll be back during the week uh, if we do see any more definitive signals but again today relatively slow markets themselves hanging in there quite well Still yet to see that definitive break one direction or another. I think the key right now is certainly the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We don't necessarily need to fill this open window, but I assume it is going to fill before we can validate and break to fresh new all-time highs. All right, everyone. It's James signing off on behalf of Pivot Point Trading. All the best. Farewell.